Hey, Bastish B for 64K, and welcome to the first episode of Compilation Nation. So I've been wanting to do a series like this for a while. We're going to have a look at compilations in each episode, like compilations, collections of games released by different companies, whether they're new compilations, where they have tons of old retro games, or whether they're actually retro compilations that were released back in the day, they were made up of budget games that were released a few years after they came out originally. So in this first episode, we're going to have a look at my two favorite compilations from 2018, the Sega Genesis Classics and the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. That's 65 games in total we're going to have a look at. We're also going to have a look at all the menus and all the extras that came with them. Also bear in mind that these two compilations are also available on your PS4, Switch and PC. So first up is the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection. So let's not waste any time here, let's get straight into it. I'm going to show you all the menu systems, I'll show you all the options, all the most important ones. Okay, so on the main menu you've got offline mode, which is basically play the arcade games. Online, you play people versus online. Now the museum mode, now this is where all the meat of the disc lies. <laughs> All the history, so the history is a year-by-year -year breakdown of the entire Street Fighter series from beginning right up to the end of Third Strike. It is meticulous, it gives every single release of every single version of the game. It's pretty fantastic. The next one is characters. You can go in and check out the profiles for every single character from every single game. All details about the characters, anything you want to know about them. It's pretty damn awesome. The third one is my favorite. It's music. Now this is the full soundtrack to every single game on this disc. All 12 soundtracks for all 12 games. How amazing is that? You can go in and listen to them as much as you want. And the last one is the making of Street Fighter. So you can go in here and you can check out like kind of design documents and pictures and all different little details about how they got these games made like Street Fighter 2, Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter 3, the original. You know it's it's extremely cool. If you want to really get down to the heart of it and see some awesome artwork and stuff like that, concept art, this is the place to be. Okay when you go back to the main menu and you select arcade, you present with all the games, you can go and play, but you can also get more info about them from this menu, you can find out what type of arcade board it was on, when it was released, the exact day, tips and tricks, trivia, it's all condensed into this little mini history file that you can read before you play the game. Okay, so the last note about the menus, when you start playing the game, you can pause it, and you'll bring up this menu, now this is where you can change the screen look or aspect ratio. So you can have the choice of like original, you can have like full screen, you can have widescreen, you can also change the filter so you can make it look like a regular TV, like an old CRT TV, you can make it look like a original arcade kind of scanline look, or you can have like none of that if you want. You can also change the borders on the sides, so you can make it have like just black borders or you can change it so you can have like the original arcade decals on the side of the screen just like an old arcade machine. And that's about it for all the menu systems. Okay, with the menus out of the way, let's get down to the games. So I'm going to show you all 12 Street Fighter games here. I'm going to tell you my honest opinions on what I think of them as games briefly. And I'm also going to go through all the options and changes they made to each game. There are multiple versions of some of these games, so I'm going to also tell you what the differences are, like Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter 3 have multiple versions, and give you all that type of information. And on that note, let's play these suckers. So first up we got the original Street Fighter which was released in 1987 in the arcades. I was lucky enough to actually play this in the original arcade version, the one with the massive buttons, the punch pads. It was very cool, it definitely added a lot of uh, character to the game. It probably made it way better than it is because the game is very mediocre at best. A couple of facts about this game, in this version you can only play as Ryu, he's the only playable character, which is kind of odd when you start playing the rest of the Street Fighter games, you'll see how many characters you get to choose from. Also the final boss in this one is Sagat, as opposed to M. Barson, which it usually is in the older ones. And this is a game where Ryu gives him a massive scar on his chest, which you'll see in later games, it happens at the end of this tournament. A couple of really good notes about this game though, even though it's a mediocre at best, it did introduce a couple of 
cool techniques which are used in fighting games all the way up until now. It uses the six button method, which is light punch, medium punch, and heavy punch, light kick, medium kick, and heavy kick. This is a standard for most fighting games even till now, so that was introduced. Also the half circle with half moon movements with a button, which throws a fireball in this game. That is also a standard which has been introduced into fighting games right up till now. So it did have a couple of really important innovations. And next we got Street Fighter 2 The World Warrior which was released in 1991 in the arcades. This game absolutely blew my mind when I first saw it. The fluidity of the gameplay, the actual skill needed to play it as opposed to button mashing which most fighting games were up until that point. The way you could use your combinations of moves and string them together, it was just amazing. This game really put fighting games on the map and made them a full solid genre at this point. And he has a few facts about this release. You are now able to choose 8 playable characters plus four boss characters were in the game too, as opposed to the first one's one default character that you could only choose. And like I just said, you are now able to string your attacks together. Now what this means is that as you're doing one move, you can actually start doing the motion for the next move and it flows into each other, pretty much creating the modern day combo system for fighting games. This game always felt like the original Street Fighter game to me. This is where all the nuances of Street Fighter really came from. Next we have Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition, which was released in the arcades in 1992. Out of all the Street Fighter 2 versions, this is the one I played the most. I was lucky enough to have the arcade just down the road from me at a local cafe, and we used to go there every day and have tournaments and beat the crap out of each other. It was epic. This version essentially takes everything that was awesome about the previous game and just adds more layers onto it and just improves it in all tiny little ways. For example, this time around you can not only play the 8 characters, but you can also play all 4 boss characters as well. You can also play versus mirror matches, which is now possible, so you can have 2 of the same characters on the same screen at the same time. Also a whole bunch of extra moves were added to some of the classic characters. I played this game a lot in the arcades, but I probably played the excellent conversion to the Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis even more. We used to play that at home on almost a daily basis, just as much as the arcade. It was a really excellent conversion, and this game is just fantastic. Next up is Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting that was released in the arcades in 1992. Now we're not going to spend a lot of time on this one because this almost feels like just a day one patch, you know, like for a modern game, but for an old arcade game. So there's not a lot of new features here. I'll just go through them briefly. The most notable feature as explained in the name Harper Fighting. The gameplay has been sped up. You're either going to like this or hate it. Uh, I think it's actually quite cool. So it's really just going to come down to what you like. And besides that, there's been more special moves added to certain characters. And the default color for each character has been changed. So when you select them, you're going to get a different color. And that's really about it. This is a really minor upgrade. Next up is Super Street Fighter 2 The New Challenges, which was at least in the arcades in 1993. Now as you can see this game has a bunch of big changes. I always felt that this game deserved its own unique title. It was still titled under the Street Fighter 2 series. It was really a far removed game from Street Fighter 2. Now part of those big changes besides a complete graphic and sound overhaul which makes the game look absolutely fantastic. You also got four new characters including Fei Long and Kami. All the older characters also have lots of extra moves. This was another game also that I played on my Mega Drive to death. I played in the arcades a couple times. I really didn't see this game very often. So the Mega Drive version became the version that I played the most and again another excellent conversion by Capcom. And next we got Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo which was released in 1994. Of note that this is actually the final Street Fighter 2 variation ever made. So this is the final end all be all for Street Fighter 2 and it ended on a really good note. Some of the adjustments they made in this one is a speed option so you can actually choose whether you want to make the game faster or slower which is really cool. They added a combo meter to unleash these massive big super moves which became a standard with all the games going forward. Air juggling was introduced so you can get a few kicks in on a dude while he's in the air. This also becomes a pretty much a standard in all Street Fighter games going forward. And let's not forget the debut of Akuma, everybody's favorite mental case. 
So as the final version of Street Fighter 2, I think this goes out on style. Just an awesome fighting game all around. And next up is Street Fighter Alpha, which was released in the arcades in 1995, and is still, to this day, my favorite Street Fighter series out of all of them. So this was a completely new Street Fighter game from the ground up. The graphics had a completely different style, very cartoony and extremely well animated. The sound had also had a major overhaul. The reason why Ken, Ryu, and a bunch of other characters look really young in this is because it takes place between the original Street Fighter and Street Fighter 2, so hence their younger look. Tons of new characters were added into this, including Guy and Sodom from the Final Fight series, also made by Capcom, the excellent scrolling beat em up. Also, being able to use your combo specials at level 1, 2, or 3 for different power levels was also another new major addition. I played this game originally on my Sega Saturn, which is a fantastic version if you're looking for one. It's practically arcade perfect. So definitely worth checking out. And finally we get to Street Fighter Alpha 2 which was released in the arcades in 1996. And this is by far my favorite Street Fighter game of all time. If you've seen my top 10 versus game Saturn Countdown you'll see how highly this one ranked. You should check that out. I absolutely love this game. The amount of time I spent in versus playing friends and family and just beating the crap out of each other. It was just amazing. This game has 19 characters to choose from so it's a massive jump over Alpha for one. There are five brand new characters that are introduced including Rolento and Sakura. There are also two alpha counters now available, one for kicks and one for punches. This game plays extremely well, it's super smooth, I just can't get enough of it. Definitely my favorite fighting game of all time. And next we got Street Fighter 3 The New Generation which was released in the arcades in 1997. Wow, just wow. We finally actually got a sequel to Street Fighter 2 <laughs> and boy did this game not disappoint. It was just brilliant at the time. I was lucky enough to get to play this in the arcade. I didn't get to play any of the alpha games in the arcade. I played all those on my Saturn so this was like reintroduction to old Street Fighter in the arcade. The graphics obviously had a complete overhaul. It looked completely different than the alpha series. It had a little bit more of a realistic look but still keeping their cartoony style. The animation is just absolutely brilliant in this game. It has the parry system which is in full effect and each character now has three super arts so the finishing moves get real over the top and crazy. This game was a massive jump forward for the Street Fighter series not only in terms of look and style but in terms of gameplay it was just spot on. And next up is Street Fighter 3 Second Impact which was also released in 1997. Now this is very much similar to Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting. It almost feels like a DLC patch for a Street Fighter game. It's got a lot of little good adjustments but nothing that's going to change the gameplay too drastically. So what we have are three new characters including Hugo from Final Fight, Urien and Akuma. Taunts have also been added that can now do various effects based on the character. You can now also escape from throws which is really useful. You can now also perform massive more powerful EX specials that just explode the whole screen all to hell. So basically this is just more good stuff added to an already great game. Next up is Street Fighter Alpha 3 which was released in 1998. And this is the final be all for the Alpha series. It's final game. So this one has new music, new stages, a whole bunch of new characters. The character roster count is actually 28 now, which is crazy. There are also three variations of the super combo moves that are now available for you to choose yourself, which is awesome. I played this game predominantly on my Sega Dreamcast, such an excellent version. It's actually got a lot of extra modes on it. I would go as far as to say that the Dreamcast version is actually even better than the arcade version, this one that's on this collection. You should definitely play this one on the collection, but if you're looking for like another physical copy of just Alpha by itself, Street Fighter Alpha 3, then the Dreamcast version is definitely the one you want to get. And next we got Street Fighter 3 Third Strike, which is the final game on this compilation and was released in the arcades in 1999. The character roster for this is crazy now with 19 characters. Another notable feature now is that you can actually parry when you're half stunned so you don't have to get that big good old lob across the screen. <laughs> you are now also evaluated after each fight to give like some sort of ranking so you can get an idea of how good a Street Fighter player you actually are. This is just more excellent stuff added to the already excellent Street Fighter 3. This is its final version. 
it is absolutely perfect. This is one of my favorite Street Fighter games ever. I would have to put it second only to Street Fighter Alpha 2, then this one, Street Fighter 3, Third Strike, and then Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Those three games I played the most and I still play them on a regular basis. This is not only an excellent end to this compilation, but it's also a brilliant end to the 2D excellence that was the Street Fighter series. So what are my overall thoughts on this collection? I think it's freaking excellent. If you are a Street Fighter fan on any level, you need to buy this. It is just fantastic. Just the amount of detail, the archives, the artwork, the explanation of each game, the entire history roster of everything and every single character, every single version of the game. The games themselves are perfect. It includes my personal favorite Street Fighter games, Street Fighter Alpha 2 and Street Fighter Third Strike, so I'm in fighting heaven. <laughs> now let's check out the Sega Genesis classics. So straight off the bat, I'm just gonna say, this collection is freaking awesome. So this compilation has a lot of games. You got 53 in total. So inside the box, beside the disc, you actually got something extra. You get this. How awesome is that? You also got the classic Golden Axe poster. Okay, so let's get to the heart of the compilation. We're gonna check out the menu systems. I'm using the Xbox One. Okay, so welcome to the menu systems. As you can see, it resembles like a 1990s bedroom. So on your left you got extras, then online multiplayer, import options, console settings, TV, credits, games library, audio settings, and room settings. So we're going to go through each one of these very quickly, and then we're going to get on to what you really want to see, which is the games. Okay, so we jump straight to the left with the extras section, and this has multiple things. The first one is achievements. This is just your usual achievements, like on Xbox, or trophies for PS4 can check them out and then you've got also challenges now this is unique these are like taking the real game and breaking down them into like kind of mini games kind of like the NES remix things where you can have like a challenge try and get certain criteria within a game do something it's actually very cool and I would highly suggest you check these out so next we're gonna jump into the online multiplayer most of these games have an online component which is very cool you can finally play them like with people that aren't sitting next to you so you can either like choose your game whatever you want and go and obviously find online components to it but I like to just put it on like this random you just go and search and I'll just find any game that there's somebody playing it out there that's close to you for example it found Streets of Rage. I can just press X and it'll jump me straight into the game. Awesome. So we're going to jump down to input options. This gives you your different variations on the button layout for your controller. You got layout 0 and layout 1. There's no other options you can choose. You can't choose them individually. Uh, I have no problem with this because the button layout for the default is pretty good. And next we'll check out console settings. This is probably the most important one. You've got a whole lot of variations to your left of the picture quality, you can change it, you can make the graphics look smoother, you can make them more, more pixely, you can add scan lines like an old arcade or CRT TV, all that kind of stuff. Everything is up to your preference really. You can have stretch screen, you know, full screen, that kind of thing. Uh, you can disable the sprite limit, that means that the games will be smoother. You can put in mirror mode, it flips the image, makes the games look super weird. <laughs> you can have different grids on the side of your games, if that's what you prefer. You can also play the game from this kind of TV view, which I think is pretty interesting. It actually looks pretty good as well. And the last thing we'll look at quickly is the room settings. You can hide the labels here on the menus to make the room look more realistic, or you can change the time of day to whatever you want to make it look night or day gives the room a little bit more atmosphere. And here is the full games library that we're about to look at. Okay, so now's the real part which you've all been waiting for. We're gonna play all these games. I'm gonna play every single game, rapid fire style, tell you what I think, all 53 of them. So pause this right now, grab some coffee, get ready for it. This is about seven minutes of just pure blitzing gameplay. 
First up we got Alex Kidd and the Enchanted Castle, which always felt a bit like a Master System game to me, but it's still a decent side-scrolling platformer. At number 2 we got Alien Storm, which is a really good arcade conversion, and a game I've played through many times in the two-player mode. At number 3 we got Alien Soldier, which is an excellent side-scrolling kill fest by Treasure, that is an absolutely brilliant game, with excellent graphics and sound. Next is Altered Beast, which is another cool arcade conversion. It's a bit slow and clunky, but honestly, I still like it despite its flaws. At number 5 we got Beyond Oasis, which is a brilliant action RPG in the Zelda vein. Top notch music by Yuzo Kashiro and a beautiful 2D top down graphics. Next is Biohazard Battle, which is an underrated side scrolling shoot 'em up. It ticks all the right boxes without being anything too memorable. At number 7 is the fun Bonanza Brothers, which is a great little house game that kind of reminds me of the old Spy vs. Spy games on the C64. It has a really cool two player option. Next is Columns, which is Sega's knockoff of Tetris. Every major company at the time had a Tetris knockoff back then. It's still a good game if you like this kind of thing. Next we've got Columns 3, which is a vastly superior game. Much better graphics, a sense of a story, and really good music. Play this one instead. At number 10 we've got Comic Zone, which is an absolutely excellent side scrolling adventure game with excellent art style and really good gameplay. A must play. Next is Crackdown, which is a fun arcade style two player romp where defusing bombs and time is your real enemy. And number 12 is Decap Attack, which is a pretty good platform game with nice graphics and a fun story. At number 13 is Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which is another Tetris knockoff with a Sonic theme. I played this a lot back in the day and it's still a pretty fun game. At number 14 is another demented treasure game called Dynamite Heady. This is a must play side scroller with tons of variety and great graphics. Next is Eswat, which is another arcade conversion. It's a side scroller, kill everybody type shinobi game. At number 16 is Fatal Labyrinth, which is a bit of a forgotten RPG dungeon crawler that is pretty good if you give it a chance. At number 17 is Flicky, which is an arcade action game where you guide a bunch of little birds to an exit as quickly as possible. Is this where they got the idea for Lemmings? Next is Gain Ground, which is a cool let's kill everything on the screen then move to the next stage game. Fun gameplay that gets real difficult. At number 19 is Galaxy Force 2, which is a bit of a poor man's afterburner. I've never really been too fond of this game. It's average at best. Next is Golden Axe, which is a pretty good arcade conversion of this classic game. It's short, but it's well worth the ride. At number 21 is Golden Axe 2, which is more of the same in the sequel. It isn't quite as memorable, but it's still a good romp in two-player mode. At number 22 is Golden Axe 3, which is the underrated third installment that I actually really quite enjoy. Again, another cool two-player side scrolling kill fest. At number 23, we've got Gunstar Heroes, which is a brilliant side scrolling running game game from Treasure that I absolutely played to death back in the day. Excellent on all fronts. Next is Kid Chameleon, which is a pretty good platform game with enough unique gameplay mechanics to make you want to come back for more. At number 25 is Landstalker, which is a really good isometric action RPG that has some awesome graphics and great atmosphere. Next is Light Crusader, which is the last treasure game on this list and is a great three quarter view action RPG. At number 27 we've got Fantasy Star 2, undoubtedly one of the best RPGs on this system. Played this game like crazy great story, settings and characters. At number 28 we've got Fantasy Star 3 which is a game I honestly never got around to playing back in the day. It seems pretty decent so far. At number 29 we've got Fantasy Star 4 which is an excellent ending to the 16 bits Fantasy Star games and is a must play RPG. Excellent on all levels. Next is Ristar which is a great attempt by Sega to make another mascot character and is a great platform game that has almost been completely forgotten. At number 31 is Shadow Dancer which brings back that great shinobi action with good graphics and tight game play. Next is Shining Force, which is a brilliant turn-based fantasy strategy game. This is as good now as it's ever been. Play it. At number 33 is Shining Force 2, the superior sequel that is the best Mega Drive version of this game. Excellent gameplay and presentation. Next is Shining in the Darkness, which is kind of a spin-off game of the Shining Force series. It's a pretty good dungeon crawler in the eye of the beholder vein. Next is Shinobi 3, which is another excellent game in the series that is well worth playing. Number 36 is Sonic 3D Blast, which is a decent Sonic spin-off. Not really too much of a fan of this, but it's a competent game and well made nevertheless. Next is Sonic Spinball, which is a totally awesome Sonic spin-off that I've always had tons of fun with. It's Sonic in a pinball machine. Brilliant. 
At number 38 is the original Sonic the Hedgehog, which is an absolute classic and one of the first games I ever played on the system way back when. Awesome all round. Number 39 is Sonic 2, which is an excellent sequel by Sonic Team that improves on everything in the first game. It's still my favourite Sonic game ever. Next is Space Area 2, which is a variation on the old arcade game. Decent game, but the frame rate always slowed this game down a lot for me. At number 41 is Streets of Rage, which is a fantastic side scrolling beat em up with excellent music and gameplay. Next is Streets of Rage 2, which is an even better sequel for me and is the best side scrolling beat em up of all time in my book. Number 43 is Streets of Rage 3, the last entry, and it isn't quite as good as number 2, but again, it's still another corker of a beat em up that definitely needs to be played. Number 44, we got Super Thunderblade, which is a fun conversion of the arcade game where you fly, chop, and shoot the hell out of everybody. At number 45, we got Sword of Vermilion which is a criminally underrated action RPG that is a must play and is well worth your time. Next is Revenge of Shinobi which is the last Shinobi game on this list and is yet another game I really like. Play it. At 47 we've got Toe Jam and Earl which is a weird collect stuff and escape the level type game that's really hard to describe. It's very charming, has a lot of atmosphere and is great in the two player mode. Next is Toe Jam and Earl Panic and Funkatron, which is the crazy sequel that turns the franchise into a side scroller. <laughs> awesome graphics, animation and sound. At number 49 we got Vector Man, which is an impressive looking side scrolling run and gun type game that is really fun to play. Next is Vector Man 2, which is the sequel, which is also pretty good. It's more of the same for the most part. At number 51 we got Virtua Fighter 2, which is a really bold attempt to put this arcade beast on the aging Mega Drive at the time. It's okay I guess, you're better off playing the Saturn version. Though. At number 52, Wonder Boy 3 in Monsters Lair, another cool sequel in the Wonder Boy series. Fun, colourful arcade action. And the last one, number 53, is Wonder Boy in Monster World, which is a platform action RPG type adventure that is very cool and is another must play game. So, what are my overall thoughts on this collection? I think it's freaking fantastic. We need these kind of compilations every once in a while. I mean, it's worth getting this compilation for the Streets of Rage collection and the Shining Force collection alone, never mind anything else. The price point is also really good. It's not a full price game. So 53 games for this price, crazy. Hopefully we're gonna see something from Sega like a Sega Dreamcast collection or a Sega Saturn collection, please, Sega Saturn collection in the future, but for now, if you've never played any Mega Drive or never had the opportunity to play Mega Drive or Genesis games back in the day, then this is a must get. And that was the first episode of Compilation Nation. I hope you enjoyed it. For me, this is a really fun series to make. I realize as a YouTuber, I'm never gonna get a chance to really show all the retro games I ever wanna show or review. So this way I can show like a whole pile of them really quickly and at least give some sort of thoughts on some of these classics that I'll probably never get around to reviewing anyway. And thanks for joining me, Bassish B at 64K. If you can like and subscribe, that'll be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Catch credits. Welcome to the family. Get ready.